we'll start recording and do the meeting. Um, okay, so welcome to the Global Community Call, as always, um, with project updates. We've got Rachel, Hunter, Gamli, Giovanna, and Elisa here with Paige as well. And uh, let's get started. So we've got a few updates on the table side, actually. Um, Next slide. Yeah. We have, yeah, so the Juggle Africa. So Gamli could probably introduce it actually if he, if he wanted to. Mm. Yeah, hello everybody. Hi, Chris. Um, so, um, as part of growing the Jugal community in Africa, we have um, periodic uh, community call series also in place. And the next community call is going to be a panel discussion where we'd have a conversation um, about the link between the fourth industrial revolution and social innovation in Africa. Um, the idea being that uh, fourth industrial revolution offers lots of opportunities. So the kinds of technologies and tools that are being developed um, can be leveraged for social impact. But at the same time, even as we discussed the downsides of uh, the fourth industrial revolution, for example, its effects on the future of work and things like privacy and uh, personal security. It means that uh, the patients have to come in place to limit some of the, the dangers or some of the, uh, the negative sides. So this conversation within the African context will be very uh, relevant. So we have three speakers um, across industry, um, academia, and civil society um, who will be, uh, you know, leading this conversation um, alongside other um, interesting people um, across the African continent and um, indeed from around the world, you know, with different viewpoints. So you are very much welcome to join in this conversation. I will drop the link um, to register in the chat. And uh, looking forward to having all of you. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks. Um, I'm actually going to go. I think that sounds really cool. Um, the video might not be loading right now, but um, what's also really interesting is uh, we've got uh, a new partner in the program um, called Epidemium Season 3. Paige knows much more about it than me if she wants to talk about it. But we've got a little video uh, yeah. as well. Maybe I'll try to run the video and see if it works. The explosion of big data represents a huge opportunity to improve research outcomes. However, specific know-how is required to exploit this data, therefore requiring a broad set of skills available in a more inclusive and collaborative framework. Epidemium offers a solution with an alternative space capable of hosting and enabling the interaction of researchers, doctors, data scientists, patients, graphic designers, and sociologists. This distributed research framework allows transdisciplinary teams. All results created within Epidemium are and will remain freely accessible to all. Join the Epidemium ecosystem. Discover this innovative research project. Help us expand the community by participating in an open and agile program. Together, developing tools for research, solutions for physicians, and answers for patients. Oops. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> and yeah, and so this year, this year is season three, actually, after after a good few years of pause. But um, the, the, there's going to be two main challenges. One of them is around um, kind of... Uh, Neck, head, uh, neck cancer, like throat cancer uh, related to HPV. Uh, and the second challenge is more about open data mapping. Um, so, so it'll be really about regrouping uh, kind of doctors, researchers in that field and data scientists, as well as obviously a bunch of other interdisciplinary skills to kind of um, publish and, and do research and publish around that. Um, so we think it'll be interesting. There's been, been gonna be a launch event on September 9th uh, and uh, there's already a Slack channel set up and you know things are going to start kicking off pretty soon. So next slide. Before you go on, look, I have the very first Epidemium Livre Blanche. 
Check it out. Yeah, an epidemium and <laughs> I, I found it on the shelf and it's so cute because it has my little sticky inside mm -hmm. that says this sort of partnership is how La Payas was able to finance a lot. Also have research fellows. Like this was like when our, we had our first visit to La Payas. <laughs> right. The original program basically had a huge impact. And when was when was season two? Uh, shoot, I'd have to look at that. Mm -hmm. again, but okay. it been 2016, I think. Okay. That's, yeah. But, but you know, this is this is totally the way to get me to stay involved because my whole <laughs> Azure thing and genomic integrity, it's all about cancer too, right? Um, I mean, so many things. Anyway. <laughs> love it. Love to hear that. I like it. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if Chris is still around. No, he's not um, because he's on a train and potentially having connection problems. So, um, Gamely, you've worked on these online MOOCs. Yeah, yes, indeed. Um, yeah, I can, I can talk about this as well. So, um, basically, uh, within Jogol Africa, uh, myself, Chris, and we have two collaborators, one in Ghana, Masi Hive, um, Harry, I'm sure all of you know Harry, and um, one in um, Tanzania, Dr. Linda Salenkwa from uh, Mbeya University of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. We've developed a small project to build capacity, community, and also enable innovations um, against antimicrobial resistance in Africa. So we have a space, Africa Against uh, Antimicrobial Resistance for that. Um, check it out. And within that, we are running um, a course in antimicrobial resistance. So we are looking at two main skills, understanding basic microbiology and um, how to test for antimicrobial resistance, and also how to use um, a digital tools to map uh, AMR. Um, so we'll be starting basically in Ghana and Tanzania. So there's an online course that it's accessible to everybody around the world um, if they are interested. And so we are looking forward to um, launching the application. So the form is already set. So we are looking forward to receiving applications from mainly students, lab technicians, activists who are interested to learn more about AMR um, in Africa. So um, yeah, the form will go live soon. And also the MOOC has been set up in such a way that we have like different topics and um, different days. So the details are in the flyer that's on the screen. And so we'll be running all these different modules um, from um, next month. Um, all the way to late in October. At the end of the day, we'll also launch a small um, micro grant or innovation um, competition for one project to receive some support. So, um, that's what it's about. I'm sorry. I'm signing up. That looks awesome. This is an area that I'm interested in. Will it have any links to the old, the anti biogo project? Um, yeah, we are not certain yet. We, we, we are trying to see if we can get anti biogo on board. That's not something which is um, confirmed yet, but yeah, uh, we are open to exploring different tools that can help in this fight against Emma. All right, um, and then, uh, so I guess we've included this week's digest. Eloisa, maybe you wanna talk a little more about it. Oh, by the way, um, everyone, I don't know if you've met Eloisa, but she's just joined the Juggle team, obviously, is um, also kind of working on community. Uh, so, thank you, Eloisa. Uh, and if you wanna explain the digest a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, I've been writing the digests now, and um, we're night four topics that we want to highlight for the community. Um, the first one is about beneficial bio. They're, they are a network of social enterprises run by biologists. Sorry, I'm just reading. They're trying to help labs around the world uh, to secure regions quickly and economically. So they are promoting this market survey. There's the English version and the Spanish version as well to better understand lab needs, especially from researchers from South America. 
So the idea is that if you are one of those, you can uh, fill the survey, but if you know any persons that might fit, you can also share with them and that would be great. Uh, also, we highlighted again the um, event Gamali was talking about, about the port re industrial revolution in Africa and uh, the social innovation impacts. Uh, it will be held next week on September 1st, 4 p.m. GMT. Um, but I, I think um, we highlighted the IGEM Renzymes need last week. Oh, just let me check here. Yeah, for this week, actually, we highlighted beneficial bio, uh, the the port industrial revolution panel, GCC, and also a need from an after IGEM committee. They're developing a global policy mapping hackathon that intends to map the landscape of global import slash export practices that apply to synthetic biology. Um, and they are needing people to work in the organization, the part of organization, the, the, the event, uh, things related to outreach, social media, but also they need help in strategies to, hi. <laughs> uh, they are needs of people to help them in, with strategies to make the judgments of the outcomes. So I tried to find Tessa. She's one of the leads for that on our Slack, but apparently, apparently she isn't there. So if you want, you can send uh, her a message through the platform. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it, basically. Thank you. Um, Chris, you can take over again since you're back. Sorry about that. I just had a, a Wi-Fi cut. Um, so um, again, if, if anyone you, I mean, you would like to have a highlighted event of your project, like talk about it for 40 minutes, have a look at sort of hackathon even, talk about what might happen in the future if your um, project actually, it works and becomes a reality across the globe. Um, we're thinking about creating this kind of event. So uh, please volunteer this on, if you're on YouTube as well. Uh, okay, should we get to the, the projects then? Yes. Thanks, Rachel, first. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, the main new information is really just more in the line of trying to find out if we can get this really made in large scale and have efficient batches and so on that are reliable and ready to go to where they're most needed. And so we, um, the main update was a great call today <laughs> with uh, one group that has a lyophilizing partner that they recently acquired. And so it's, it sounds like we're gonna get a whole bunch of reactions worth of freeze-dried stuff to try with our Corona Detective primer mixes. And um, there are two other lyophilization companies that um, we'll be talking with next week too. And um, I'm excited also because the, the reactions we're gonna be getting have the special enzyme to help prevent carryover contamination, which is something I've never used before. And so I'm gonna get to learn one more thing, try some more controls. And um, hopefully it would improve Corona Detective in the long run to have that extra, it's a, a special kind of nucleotide and another special enzyme. So we would have three enzymes in our um, mix and another kind of nucleotide, this modified nucleotide. Um, so we're gonna get those samples freeze-dried in glass vials um, sent both to Hackwarium and to Paris to create. So Fran will get to play with them too and we'll do things in parallel and try and document well as, as we always try. <laughs> um, and then the second main thing is just that we've been looking into local productions also. And we had a great chat with Jenny Malloy on Monday and um, there's clinical validations going on right now in Ghana. And in Chile and Sri Lanka, I'm not quite sure. It sounded like the Sri Lanka package was stuck in customs for ages. 
and there was paperwork that because they're really in another big surge of contaminations of infections, um, they haven't been able to get the new paperwork to the, um, the shipping company and to, to the, the border patrol people. So it's going to be a great test to see how stable and reliable our reaction tubes are because they're just sitting there, um, hopefully not at 40 degrees or something like that. But um, they're free stride, they should be fine. So it's going to be great to see the results when Madhavi finally gets back into the lab, our, our colleague in Sri Lanka. She's the same one who helped us with the XPRIZE stuff too. Um, and then the third big update is about that the paper is out. And so the papers from most of our collaborators in the nucleic acid amplification channel in the Slack, um, they're all out as, as early access via that link there. And so, yes, Sarah and um, Ali and everybody should be feeling good. And I think we should try and do some sort of virtual champagne event if possible. <laughs> and then our next steps is that we hope that some of these companies will ultimately um, be able to make the proof of principle batches that can really be used for getting regulatory approval. And then once that sort of thing is really happening, we'll find out more about what the real price point is per reaction because if it's too expensive there's just no way it's going to happen and um yeah I, I feel encouraged by our call today but that also um isn't the fast route so we're keeping we we have other companies that we haven't even contacted yet um in also Taiwan. Uh, Fran also got some enzymes from China the other day and they looked good. He had good results yesterday. So I think I should, that's probably over five minutes and I'm really glad for all the support here. Thank you. <laughs> Rachel. Okay, this one's enough. Thank you. It's amazing progress, Rachel. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Sante. Um, so I, uh, where am I at? So uh, since I saw you guys uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been working on the app. Um, we have 3D scanning and point cloud generation implemented from at least one angle. And I'll show you a video in just a minute because it's really cool to look at and I've been playing with it a lot. Um, we also have the six, uh, six of 10 facial measurements implemented and they seem to be pretty accurate. Um, and uh, the only the only measurements we don't have, I'm, I'm primarily getting measurements from the front of the face since I don't have the side yet. We're not able to get some of those side measurements. Um, and then I'm preparing a, the first phase pilot survey. Uh, I'm going to put it out on a link and send it out to everyone in the community. I have a semi-public event coming up on uh, next Tuesday. It's a like a pitch competition for startups. Um, but there's a lot of people in the healthcare market that are in there. So I'm going to use that as my opportunity to uh, launch my survey. Um, and it will just be around um, respirator usage and respirator fit. So it's just going to be asking healthcare workers or anyone that is required to use N95 respirators as part of their job. It's going to be asking them questions um, around that. And hopefully that'll give me some information. Um, and then I'll continue working on the app and um, try to find a hospital partner uh, to do the uh, user testing with the app itself. Um, I'd like to get some clinical validation of that. It, it, first phase is really going to be more about user testing and, and building the app to where they you know, like it. Um, and then later on, it will be verifying that the information is accurate. Um, let, me, let me share really quickly. Um, if I can have permission to, I'll share, I'll show the video to you really quick. Yes, let me activate that. Now let's see. Now let's just see. There you go. Okay. Good. Yay. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. And share. And let's, oops, where? Okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a demo of the app capturing the point cloud. Um, so it's 30,000 points, and this is from the iPhone, and this is from the front uh, sensor. So it's not using, it's not even using LiDAR, um, but it's interesting because um, 
the information that Apple needs for face recognition just happens to be really accurate. Mm. Um, and it's pretty amazing that with just, it, I was just, the lighting was just from a window mm -hmm. um, and it gets a pretty good scan. Uh, so as I mentioned, we need to, um, let me stop sharing. Um, I don't have the presentation up, but we'll need to capture a full head scan. So we'll have the person turn to the side this way and then up and down. And we should be able to get, I'm not sure how, what happens with the back of the head. That'll be interesting uh, to see, but um, it, this is also really scary that I can just like point my phone at someone and scan their face. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little weird. I, I, I do, I've mentioned before, I've had some reservations about um, asking healthcare workers for this information. So I wanna make sure that there's a privacy policy in place and I have like some kind of a promise as a corporation that this, this information will never be um, distributed or, um, and it's just gonna be for research purposes only. So I, I wanna do this to help, but still it's just scary. So I wanna make sure the legal side of that is taken care of. Um, and then I still need to code the size classification logic. I'm gonna do it with the six measurements as well as I can. Um, and then once we get the full head scanning and point cloud and all of that, we'll do, we'll do all 10. Uh, and last thing is I have an interview with the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator in September. So they're gonna send me an email soon to uh, uh, set that up and that's it. Super, that's loads of progress. Um, last time last time I heard you on a call, you you had so many things going on. Uh, did you, are you still advancing on all those things at the same time or did you kind of? I'm making like incremental progress on each of those things. I, I, I'm, I mean, my biggest motivation right now is getting this pilot out because I've been talking about it for months and I got the funding back in April. Um, so I, I haven't, the, I, and I kind of switched things up a little bit from focusing on the mask and getting that tested to really starting with the app because it's, I mean, in the end, it's supposed to be a complete process that you scan your face, do the virtual fit check, customize it, and then hopefully order it and then get something shipped to you that's customized. So that's, that's sort of the main goal for all of this, but just for research purposes, and I think for Jogal too, and then the community, I think getting this information and starting to do some interesting things with the data um, will be helpful. Cause I just, I just want to prove, I, again, I hear a lot about that respirator fit is an issue, particularly with women. Um, and uh, I just, I want to get some actual data and some actual customer stories um, and start to collect that. Cool. Um, all right. Do we still have Chris? Nope, I think we've lost him. Uh, all right, well, this is the start of the troubleshooting session, really, if anyone in the call has a, anything or any needs or kind of discussion points they want to bring up, uh, here's the moment. From my side, actually, um, Eloisa and Shrestha and I have been working on um, uh, new events for the Java community. We're trying to figure out how to uh, have the GCC so that they're really kind of available to new people as well, not just people who have been in the Jungle community for a while, but also like and connect new and old members and create more kind of networking opportunities. Uh, and so, so we've been um, we've been brainstorming this kind of what if event where we uh, collaborate with project holders and kind of look at the project and ask a like a wider question around it. So the one next week is going to be about a. Uh, Jean Francois Quiroz project to project lockdown, and we're gonna we're gonna ask uh, what is it? What if Eloisa? Um, it's something related to digit to digital rights. So something like what if um, digital rights knowledge was made more accessible? Because project lockdown is exactly about that. They're creating this app. Uh, where it facilitates for people to know their rights during a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so we'd like to like start asking kind of wider projects like that around projects and like, get a discussion going, to put people in breakout rooms to have kind of deep conversations about kind of these, these types of things. And if they don't want to talk about it, they can talk about something else like their dogs or something. Um, <laughs> but 
but I was I was wondering what what you guys on the call thought about it. If that's something that that seemed interesting or not, or if there was a if it seemed fitted to like the Joggle community. Hmm. It sounds like an interesting way to get more people involved. Um, definitely, with seven people here, we have to say we we should be building the community more. But it's still August, so I think until it's September, October, we don't we don't know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I I also was thinking about these these highlight events. Like one day, maybe we'll be able to talk about something really exciting for Corona Detective, not just the same thing over and over, <laughs> trying to negotiate things with these business people. <laughs> but I mean, that's part of, I mean, your journey as well. And it's super hard. And I feel like it's really reassuring to kind of come on this call and listen to other projects kind of update about sometimes how slow it's going, how difficult it is. Like there's, there's that aspect of we're all in the same boat in these early stage projects. That's really... Mm -hmm important to share yeah well um sorry that i had a few connection issues guys um <laughs> but um thank you for coming um and th thank you i mean uh, hunter and rachel's progress this time has been absolutely just mind-blowing i mean especially when we saw the, the points <laughs> On, on Hunter's uh, map of the it's pretty incredible. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Actually, we should, we should do the we should do the photo as we always do, I suppose. Um, it's page control this time, so it should be a bit better. Ah, thank you, cat. Hold on. It will be me and my dog. Is that a problem? <laughs> I I gotta get my dog now. <laughs> she's she's gonna be cranky that I'm getting her up. She's like snuggled under a blanket. I'm but, trying uh, to eat my lunch, to be honest. Um, <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Come here, come here. Right. That's my lab partner. Everyone I should here. borrow my neighbor's dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's trying to show more than me. <laughs> hey. Okay, now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, now it's a butt shot of the dog. <laughs> All right. Well, I got thousands. This is butt on my face. <laughs> <laughs> All good. So cute. All right. Okay. <laughs> Guys, um, see you in a couple of weeks, I suppose. Um, I hope we have some more updates to share and some more projects as well. All right. Thank you, community. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. Great week, everyone. Bye. <laughs>